Now, <clears throat> this could end up being a fiasco. New camera. Completely new camera. And I've been trying to familiarize myself with this thing to the best of my ability. So it may be a little jarring for me. Uh, but here we go. LNZ! This is my, uh, my Saber Forge Eris. Yes. Obviously, that's the power. There's no inserts in there. Oh, what happened to the light? It's bright, and it's not bright. Hopefully, it won't be too dark. Yes, let's turn this off. The reason why I started like this is because the pommel on this saber is so darn loud. It's a really nice pommel. All those vents. There's a lot of work that went into this particular design. I like that a lot. And a lot of the details on this saber are, are sublime. And there's a lot of the details from these little, uh, you know, grooves that they have there to the uh, cover tech wheel. I like the cover tech wheel. Look at that. Nice and close. And uh, the grenade section on the Eris is particularly fetching. What I like about it is these little soft scout bits right here. This is really smooth. It's really real well designed. Gives you good grip, but it doesn't grind on your hand. I wish the if I had one, you know, slight nitpick, it would be I, I kind of wish this would maybe be a couple cubes longer. But um, suffice to say, this is one of the nicer grenade sections on a saber uh, that I've encountered. So, you know, the whole finish is basically an aluminum um, brush steel-ish kind of silvery alumini, <laughs> aluminum-y <laughs> look. And then they anodize the, you know, the cutaways here. Very nice, very nice indeed. And backlit switch. This, uh, this saber's running a veteran soundboard. And uh, pretty much my go-to uh, sound font is just straight up gunmetal on this saber because it seems to fit and it sounds really good. So uh, there you go. You got your uh, your little uh, recharge port doobie thing in the boinger, and uh, more of these little cutaways. They've got a lot of cutaways on here. And I like that detail. And they have all these little windows. And there's your uh, LED uh, retention screw there. And uh, you see these little dots, these little cutaways here? That sort of uh, emulates the, uh, the little dots and little cutaways on the, um, you know, like a Graflex. But I think uh, it's also common to a Kanan Jarrus style saber, which this is most certainly a Kanan Jarrus style saber. It's a Kanan Jarrus light. I like the, with the light kind of shimmies out of there. That's kind of cool. I don't know if this is the appropriate camera. This is the camera I purchased as a GoPro. I want GoPro. A friend of mine suggested that, and here we are. <laughs> so uh, Canon Jarrus, uh, his saber is known for its Suba. And there you go. There's the Suba action. Really nice job on the Suba. Really nice finish. Everything's clean and crisp. All the all the work they did on this is just top notch. And the blade retention screw. And uh, one of the one of the best features, obviously, of Canon Jarrus Saber is this uh, really badass emitter. And uh, the thing I really like about the Saber is this section here kind of seems to slip into the shroud. I'm not sure how it's constructed, but this this is kind of a separate piece, and you can actually you can actually get your fingers sort of under there. And, and, but then they filled it with a uh, black anodization. It's just it's just really nice. Yeah, and then you got a little bit a little bit of black anodization where the suba meets the emitter. That's a nice touch. I really like that. So uh, what worked best on this saber, of course, is the 32 inch. Um, Infanti V4 blade uh, gives it a really good weight, really good balance. 
anything longer than that just doesn't work now. Uh, this uh, this particular hilt is 14 and three quarters inches long, and uh, it's it's a little bit smaller than I thought. I thought uh, by the pictures uh, that I saw on the Saberforge website that it would be a, a bigger hilt, but they uh, they kind of reserved uh, the uh, the bigger sort of aspects for the almost identical um, uh, Aries or Aris, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, version of the saber, and that one's an elite. Uh, this one, of course, is an apprentice, so that's the, that's the tiering system. And um, so the Aries or Aris is, you know, I, I don't own one, but I would imagine it's probably a, a bit more diameter, a bit larger, and a bit more Canaan jersey. Um, but they're virtually identical sabers. I mean, the thing uses the same pommel, and right all the, the entire length of the hilt from the pictures I've seen is virtually, as I said, identical, except for the switch section. I have a, one of my sabers, the Adjudicator, uses the same switch section uh, from the Aris, so, um, so that's kind of cool. And uh, let's see, let's turn this bad Larry on. <laughs> I already did a video demonstrating the uh, luminosity of the blade, but with the uh, with the maximum flicker for the uh, for the Arctic Blue, it's spectacular. It's really nice. Yeah, uh, swing sound on the on gun metals very subtle. A little underwhelming, but I've gotten used to it. Of course, you have your, uh, you've got your. Lost your block? You got your lock up. Sensitivity lowered on the uh, on the clashes on purpose. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, I, mean, I can't really see it. Yeah, maybe you can see a little bit. They got a little pommel insert in there. Kind of protects the speaker. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, it's pretty much the Aris in a nutshell. This has quickly become one of my favorite savers of all time. I'll uh, swing it around a little bit. Now that since this is a GoPro, I should be able to kind of attach this to my body somewhere and start, you know, swinging this thing around. But um, I don't really have any place to <laughs> attach it to on me. Uh, I'll figure something out in the future. That was that was kind of the whole uh, the whole idea anyway. It's a lovely, lovely saber. This uh, this took about four and a half months to arrive, and I would have to say it's, it was totally worth it. I love the I love the cutouts on this bomber. Anyway, so let's see if I can uh, get some action shots. I mean, that's what this camera's for, within reason. I find uh. The handle's a little bit short for two-handed, and uh, the suba is a little bit prohibitive for some techniques. I actually kind of put my finger, my uh, finger over the suba, and I find that really kind of helps the handling a bit. But if you want to do spins, you have to pretty much line yourself up that way. As with the veteran soundboard, you get these a degree of random clash sounds, regardless of what uh, what sensitivity you use. I've currently got this one, I think, on four, and for the swings, I have it set to six.
actually kind of worked out pretty well. Weren't easy to do. Actually, here's something I want to show you. Watch this. Okay, it's ignited. Watch what happens when I turn the saber off. It kind of gives this flare. Yeah, let's get in closer. It's a subtle thing. The flicker stops, the LED flares, and then it shuts off. Now, I really like that. <laughs> And there you have it. Yeah. That's uh yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So uh this is my review for the uh Saber Forge Eris. This has a veteran tier. I went with a black or actually sorry, um it's kinda hard to tell when you have the thing on. Silver switch. I went with the silver switch. For some reason, I keep saying black switch. I usually get the black switch. This is one of the few uh, Saber Forge uh, sabers that, you know, when I buy it and I order a switch, for some reason, I'm always getting black switches. I always seem to get black switches on my Saber Trio Sabers, too. Um, but there's nothing wrong with the silver. Actually, it's kind of cool. It's like, a, it's, it's almost weird. Like, there's like a cutout here and a cutout here. It almost looks like the switches in there at kind of a weird angle. It's solidly in there. It's just glued in there. But, um, yeah, that's something I'm going to watch out for. But, uh, so far, so good. One of my favorite sabers currently. And, uh, the Arctic Blue looks really good on this thing. If you can, uh, hey, and, uh, here's the other thing. Uh, this is one of the few sabers I've reviewed where you can actually get the thing. Well, you can't get it now because it's out of stock. Well, that's not entirely true. I think they've got maybe the black finish and the weather finish, but the standard finish, what you see here, um, that one's, I think, currently sold out, as are a lot of Sabres on um, Sabre Forge. As I mentioned uh, uh, in, a, in kind of a video yesterday, um, the uh, the pickings are kind of slim on the Sabre Forge website, and I noticed some of the LED colors are out, like Indigo. Indigo's out, so I don't know if that's... Uh, Anyway, I don't want to get into it in this particular video. So, um, hopefully this video came out well on my new GoPro camera. And, uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you enjoyed this video, you know, please feel free to like it. Or if you vehemently despise this video and think it's one of the worst things you've ever seen, by all means, go ahead and dislike it. Um, at the very least, if you can subscribe and get a steady stream of videos you don't like. <laughs> You can come to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you have any questions regarding the saber, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. I'm not the perennial expert on all things sabers, but I do try because that's what I'm here for. I'm here for you guys because you guys are awesome. All righty then. Uh, hope you all have a good night. And um, I'll be coming at you uh, probably tomorrow with another video, as I tend to do. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.